The database design tool was created to help you learn how to design databases. In particular, to create tables with the proper columns and attributes and build the correct relationships. To use it, you must first have Java installed. Most browsers already do, but if you do not have Java, this main screen will be blank in which case you need to go to www.java.com and install the free application. Once you log into database design, you should get this application and be able to retrieve the problems that are assigned for you. So go to the main menu, File, and open a problem. If you do not see anything in this list of problems, you are probably not registered for a class, so go click the class registration link and follow that process. For now, we will do the simple order problem. So select it and double click or click the open button. You should then see a list of potential attributes and columns over here. If you want to know more about the problem, go to the help menu and choose view exercise. This is a simple order form that the user wants to see. The order form has an order number and a date, a bunch of customer information, and then simple items that are being purchased that include the description and list price and quantity being purchased. In any relational database, all information is stored in tables. So the first thing you'll have to do is right-click and add a table. Call this one Customers and click Enter. If you need a little more space, you can simply drag the little division bars to give you a little more room. You can also resize the entire browser and then click Resize to set the size of the application. In the Customer table, we need to have a primary key. Typically, we tell the database to generate the keys for us, so grab the Generate Key icon and drag it and place it in Customer's table. Give that a name, Customer ID, and click Enter. Whenever a new customer is created, the database system will automatically assign it a unique number. The next step is to say, what information defines a customer? What properties do they have? If we return to the example, we can see that a customer has a first name, a last name, an address, plus other address information. But certainly the first name and last name are obvious. So go to this list. If you need, you can right click and sort it alphabetically. And here we have last name, so drag it into customer, and then do the same for first name. And for now, bring the address in here. There would be other columns that you can bring in later. But this is a start on the customer's table. We also need an orders table. Most forms will have a table that represents the entire form or report. So right click and add a new table and call this one orders. Again, this table will need a key and we should simply let the DBMS generate that key for us. So we will call it order ID and hit enter. The order table needs the date, which is here. So add the order date. It doesn't need much else, but it needs a way to connect to the customer table. The simplest answer to solve that one is to grab the customer ID and place it in the order table. Notice that it then builds the relationship for us. This relationship says that each customer can place between zero and many orders. That makes sense and each order comes from exactly one customer. If I had reversed this and put order ID in the customers table, 
it would be wrong because that would say each customer could place only a single order. That's very limiting from a business perspective, so this is the correct relationship. If I look at the problem again, I also note that I have individual items for sale. So I need a table called items that will contain information about specific items. Once again, the easiest way is to have the DBMS generate a key for us so we will create item ID. Notice that the star tells us that this column is primary key within this table. The fact that it's red and filled reminds us that it is auto-generated within that specific table. So which of these attributes apply to the items? Looking at the list or going back at the design problem, item description makes sense as does list price. There are probably some others, but this is a good starting point. Now I have a good start on the database design, but I have two tables here that are not connected, or specifically the items table not connected to anything else. Somehow there is a business relationship between orders and items. The problem is it is a many-to-many -many relationship. In a relational database, many-to-many -many relationships cannot be created directly. So each order can have many items, and each item could appear on many orders. To solve that problem, I need to add a new table. I will call this order items. This new table connecting these other two will contain both of those keys. So add the order ID and assign it a primary key. Cannot be a filled star. If it were a filled star, you would be saying that order ID would be generated in this table. But order ID was already generated in the orders table, and it cannot be created twice. It belongs generated in the orders table. We simply reuse that number in this new table. The same for item ID, drag it in, and assign it a primary key as well. Both of these columns now become the primary key. And it says that each order can have many items, and each item can appear on many orders, exactly as we want. We should probably add the quantity ordered, which tells us how many units of that particular item were ordered at that time. We can resize the box by hand, or we can double click and let the system automatically resize the box for us. Now we have a database. It's not perfect yet, it's not finished, but let's see how close we are. Go to File and Save It. Give it a name. You can call it anything that you want, but give it a name that you will recognize later. You have the ability to save multiple versions, so you can save your work, try some different things, and come back and save it under a different name. One of the more powerful features of this tool is the ability to grade your work. So select the grade option and choose either grade and mark or grade to HTML. The HTML option puts all of the comments in a single page, but grade and mark has some additional features. It displays comments down here along with the score. The score is relatively high because I already know the answer. But read through the comments. Uh, the first one, you have not yet used some of the columns. Notice that when you select this item, it displays the error message or items in red up here, so you can quickly see which items have not yet been used. Also notice that some of the tables are missing columns. Well, obviously these columns that we didn't use yet must belong in those tables. The last option is more interesting. What is the relationship between the orders and order items table? Currently, it says that each order 
can have between zero and one item. That sounds a little strange. It says that each person can order only one item at a time. But when we built this table and assigned the keys, we said that it should be that each order can have many items, and each item can appear in many orders. So we need to adjust this relationship, double click the line, and here's where that relationship is declared. So each order can have from zero, let's make that many items, and say OK. And now you can see the star to remind us. I could grade it again, and it will show me a higher score. Let's make a different mistake. Let's say we forgot to key order ID completely and see what happens. If I grade this now, I get a significant decline in the score and several new messages. In particular, there's a question of can there ever be more than one order ID? In other words, can an item be ever ordered more than one time? If you want additional information about this message, simply double click it and it will give you a little bigger description of what it's trying to explain. Or you can click more help and it will go through more of the design principles. Or you can return to your textbook and read more about how we design databases. Another interesting feature, uh, let's fix this error first and make sure it's saved. Another interesting feature of the tool is that we can generate a script that will create the tables for us in our chosen database. In this example, the DBMS is set to SQL Server. You can fairly quickly change to Oracle or DB2 and tell it to rebuild. Select the items here, or click Control A to select all of them, and then we can right click and copy that. We can now paste this script in a SQL Server query window, tell it to execute, and it will generate every one of these tables and the relationships in that DBMS. It will not include data, but your design can fairly quickly be implemented within your selected database system. So the tool is relatively powerful. The main features are that you can grade your work and get immediate feedback.